YouTubers, Pastor Bob. Hey, I hope you guys all had a blessed week. As I mentioned in the last video, man, mine's been rough. I'm serious. For two weeks now, two solid weeks, I had a heck of a time recording last weekend. I'm having a little bit of trouble today, but guys, listen. I've been getting hit with everything. I mean, fiery darts from the Wicked One, temptation, you name it. I have just been getting bombarded. And everybody I talk to, they seem to be going through the same exact things. So I think the, the demonic host is working overtime. But listen, I want to talk to you real quick about something. Because it has to do with all these temptations and all these fiery darts of the Wicked One. And that is... Are you good enough? Are you good enough? You know, there are two Psalms that are almost identical. They start out almost identical. And it's Psalm 14 and 53. And God repeated this, so I think that we need to take heed to what it says. And this is what it says. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that does good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, any that seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that does good. No, not one. There is no one who deserves God. There is no one who deserves to go to heaven. No one. There's no one that you need to compare yourself to because they're just as filthy as you are. No one is good. Sometimes as Christians, you know, we'll, we'll have a couple of good months and we'll sit there and think we've arrived. We're good. We're a little better than all those around us. Sometimes we think that. Sometimes I think that. We feel as though they're weak and we are spiritually strong. I mean, we've, we've made it. They're struggling to live for God. We're living to God for God with no problem. That's when the I have arrived becomes spiritual pride. And that's very dangerous. Christians, you and I, we have this nasty little habit of looking down on those people who sin differently than we do. All Christians have this problem at one time or another. We look down on others who sin differently than we do. Oh, we still sin every day, but it's different than the way they sin. My sins are minuscule. Theirs are like, pfft. I mean, everybody can see theirs. This is where Paul was when it comes to spiritual pride. He talks about it in Romans 7, 14 to 16. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. But what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. For we know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So this is what Paul said. He said, man, this flesh stinks. The good things that I think I'm going to do that, I don't wind up doing it. And the evil that I absolutely hate, I wind up doing anyway. Someone makes me mad, something slips out of my mouth. I mean, it's just... God, I just can't seem to get this flesh under control. No way. Paul said, no, I still sin every day, and I can't help it as long as I'm in this flesh. Me, 
Whenever I think I've arrived, I screw up. It never fails. I'm my own worst enemy, just like Paul. Whenever I think I've arrived, I have a major screw up. It's just the way it is. There's a scripture found in Psalms 84.10. This is what it says. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I remember when I first read that scripture years ago, years ago, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. I remember the first time I ever read that scripture, I said, God, I'll take that job. I'll take that job. A doorkeeper in heaven, I will take that job. If I don't deserve nothing else, I'll take that job. I'd be happy to get it. People, listen, this is why I'm making this video. Don't beat yourself up when you fall, okay? We all fall. I fall. Paul had a problem in the flesh. You're going to fall. Don't beat yourself up when you fail. When you fail, especially because we, whenever we fall, whenever we do anything wrong, we automatically think, I failed God. Right? Because that's what I think. It's what we all think. I failed God. People, you're always going to fail. As long as you're in this flesh, you're going to fail. That's why we don't want to look down on others that sin differently than we do because we sin too. Just different than them. That's what it says in John 6, 35-37. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. He that believes in me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye have seen me and believe not, all that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. People, listen. You're saved by God's promises. You are saved because God said, if you come to me, I will accept you. I will never cast you out. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. People, listen. Those promises are based on your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, not on your behavior. Got it? Not on your ability not to sin. It's based on His promises, not on your behavior. Got it? You know what? People listen. Let me tell you guys who I think one of the most blessed people ever in all of history. And that is the thief on the cross. This guy lived his whole life just a total thief, robber. I mean, he was the scum of the earth. This guy was a dirt bag. Finally gets caught, gets sentenced to death, and he's up on a cross dying, right? Dying. And his buddy in crime starts saying stuff to Jesus, and he goes like, hey, shut up, dude. Shut up. You and I are up on this cross because we deserve to be here. This guy has done nothing wrong. And then the guy just looks at Jesus before he dies. He's going to be dead in a couple hours. He looks over at Jesus and he says, Hey, Lord Jesus, when you come in your kingdom, when you remember me, that man had a pure heart. He knew why he was there. He admitted it. He admitted that Jesus did not deserve to be there. He admitted his holiness. And he just asked him, Lord, when you come in your kingdom, remember me. And the Lord says, You got it. You got it. Today you're going to be with me in paradise. But listen, this is why I think this guy's blessed. Because he died right then. He was going to die in a couple hours. He never had to do what you and I have to do. That is, live in this flesh and try to serve God. And then every time you fail, you think it's horrible. Every time we fail, it's horrible. 
We think we let God down, we let ourselves down, we let everybody down. This guy on that cross, he didn't have to do that. <laughs> he didn't have to live for God, he was only going to be alive a couple more hours. But anyway, people listen. You have to get this. Always remember this. Everybody sins. Don't look down on people that sin different than you. We all have our struggles. I have mine, you have yours. You are saved by God's mercy and God's grace. You are saved by faith, mercy, and grace alone. You add nothing to your salvation, not one speck. Nothing. You don't bring anything to the table. The truth is, you haven't arrived yet. I haven't arrived yet. All of us, including myself, we are a work in progress. We're a work in progress. Be kind to all your fellow human beings, all your brothers and sisters in Christ, because they're going through a lot just like you are. They also are a work in progress, and they also haven't arrived yet. Anyway, I hope all that made sense. Uh, times are going to get rough. You're going to fail. But you're saved by faith in Christ, not by your behavior. Anyway, heaven or hell you choose, just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal. like the Amazon or something. Now I need shots in the back. <laughs> <laughs>